Hello and welcome to Reality TV Cringe. I am one of your hosts, Delia, here with my real tight homegirl and my daughter-in-law, Beta. Hi, everybody. We are here to talk Sister Wives, honey. Girl. We are wrapping up season five. We've been through all of those episodes. So many. And it's perfect timing because next week we are starting... <sighs> Sister Wives season 19. I can't wait. Yes. Give it to me. I'm so ready for it. Mm. So before we get into this episode, we have to issue you a disclaimer. Please hide your wife and hide your kids. This is a politically incorrect podcast. We say a lot of bad words. We have stupid opinions and we ain't going to apologize for that. No. So if you're sensitive, you might want to find yourself another dumpster, baby. But if you're down to talk about some Mormonism and a specific cul-de-sac, uh. welcome to this dumpster. Yeah, and if you like what we do, be sure to follow us on Instagram at RealityTVCringe and join us on Patreon, patreon.com slash RealityTVCringe. We have a lot of bonus content up on there, okay? So much. So much. If you are watching on YouTube, please don't forget to like and comment and share and subscribe everything you do really helps us and to share all you have to do is hit share copy that link you don't even have to share i won't say anything yeah i know beaters won't say anything but it's still gonna help us it would so thank you thank you very much all right before we get into the episode i got one other thing okay well i got two things because we have to talk about that thing that happened last week when we were sick the house the for sale sign went up on cody and robin's McMansion. It is currently up on Zillow right now, so you can go and look at the interior, and it's so ugly. Who do you think you're talking to? You don't think every person within the sound of our voice has already looked at that Zillow listing, saw it on Reddit, saw it on Instagram, looked through it with a fine tooth comb? You know they did. I mean, I hope so. Some people still comment on our Instagram, like, where can I see the listing? Where can I find... It's on Zillow. <laughs> it's everywhere. <laughs> so they listed the Hoarder House McMansion where uh, in lies the Dickensian Village. <laughs> yeah. They listed that for $1,650,000. Isn't that like less than what it's actually valued at? No, it says on Zillow that it's overvalued by what, three or four hundred thousand dollars <gasps> oh, I didn't see They can't really depend on Zillow for that. Yeah. But... I think it's pretty subjective when you're talking about those numbers and you're in a place like Flagstaff. Yeah. Dealing with one of these bigger homes. True. I did see something. I think it was on a subreddit somewhere where somebody posted the history of the listing. Yes. Like they started off a little higher. Mm-hmm. Then they went down to like 1.2 million. Then they went down to like 900,000. Oh. Then they went back up to 1.6 all within a day or two. Uh-huh. And people were wondering why they might have done that. I don't know. I'm not sure either. I have no idea. If you know, please let us please know. Please let us know. But needless to say, when you've got a listing on a luxury property, luxury. darling, you've got to furnish some photographs. Girl. And there were about 30 or 40 photographs, which everybody went through uh-huh, with, with their raccoon tooth. monocle. Yep. So what are some of your takeaways, girl, about that house? So much purple. Like, so much purple. The master bedroom was probably the worst with that big gray gaudy bed i'm like you are ruining this house like, you all of your decor. so bad i'm like so bad and then some people were like zooming in on some of the things like there's a sculpture in there that's like seven thousand nine hundred dollars mm-hmm. there's like artwork that's like six eight grand mm-hmm. i'm like everywhere what the fuck paintings for ten thousand dollars somebody on the subreddit tallied up all of the knickknacks and it was over one hundred thousand dollars just in knickknacks and when you think about janelle yeah who just wanted to live in a casita baby yeah on the property and was unable to do that who doesn't have a place of her own when you think about janelle looking at this listing and seeing all of this expensive shit Mm -hmm. i don't know i would be so pissed oh me too I'm surprised they haven't said anything or like tried to sue because they should sue. Like he 
And Robin totally stole all of this money from mm-hmm. the other wives. Like, mm-hmm. for all of this bullshit. How? This ugly ass artwork. Isn't that against the law? Like, all if all this money is going into an LLC for all of the adults and you siphon off the money and you buy investments and artifacts and watches and paintings and Dickensian villages, like, are you being a legal fiduciary over that fund? It doesn't seem fair. Surely these women have some sort of an action that they can take (laughs) legally against Cody and Robin. And some of the theories floating out there do wonder whether they're selling because they're trying to pay off Mary and pay off Janelle, both of whom contributed to the down payment for that house. Oh, good point. And both of these women might be asking for that money back, although rumor has it that Cody and Robin pulled from their equity Mm -hmm. to pay back Janelle like a year or two ago. That's just a rumor we don't know. Yeah. But maybe that's why they're being compelled to sell. Also, a lot of us are wondering where are your coins at? Because now you don't have Mary, who was the biggest cash cow, and Golden Goose. Mm -hmm. You don't have Janelle. You don't have Christine. It's just Robin, who don't work. No, not at all. And Cody, who don't work. And all you have is TLC and Honey. That is winding down. Well, um, Cody's also doing cameos. Okay. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, my bad. (laughs) Is he making a lot of money doing those? I don't know. People are hate cameoing that. Oh, totally. Like, nobody wants a cameo from you. We should you. buy a cameo for Shirley <laughs> Temple. Oh, my God. We should. I would love that. He could say Beatrice and Delia. Oh, my God. We have to. We should do that. We should do that. Oh, my God. But a lot of people are wondering whether they are prognosticating their future and realizing that they maybe have one, maybe two more seasons of Sister Wives before it all ends. And then what have you got? Yeah, I, Nothing. And some people were making theories online that I really hope to be true, which is they were looking at like the master bedroom closet and they were looking at the clothes that were in there and it was just women's clothes, that there were no men's clothes there like the whole men's side was completely empty so people are thinking like did Cody move out like are him and Robin splitting up but then you have a preview for this season coming up posted on TLC's Instagram like just two days ago I posted on our Instagram story go follow us Uh. and it was basically like all of the spouses and everything talking about like what this season means to them and Cody and Robin both were like yeah no we're happy now like we're happy in marriage now and like Robin saying that Cody's her dream guy and so I'm like maybe they're not split up maybe people just want that to happen It'd be so great, though. I watched that on our Instagram, and Cody looks like a maniac. He does. Like, when he's smiling for the camera, he's smiling in such a way that he's trying to convey that he does not want to be there, and he's being forced to smile for the camera. Mm -hmm. He looks like a crazy person. Totally. And I'm like, what are we doing? Why are we doing this? Can you please define joy? Can you please define this or that? Like, I mean, Garrison passed. Uh, Like, if anything, this season should be a somber reckoning of a season. Mm -hmm. And we have this kind of a trailer where you're all pretending that everything's so hunky-dory and wonderful. It's not great for me. I miss Garrison. Well, and Cody's sitting there talking shit about the wives still, about how he was in unhappy marriages with all of them. So it's just like... What the fuck? Is this old footage? It's probably old footage. I don't know. It looks kind of new because Mary looked like Mary now because Mary looks different from last season. Yeah, I guess. She was looking bad, honey. She's looking a little <laughs> bit better. Um, one other thing about yeah. the sale of the house is that apparently a TikToker mm-hmm. made an appointment with the realtor to go and view the McMansion with one of her friends. They surreptitiously videoed within the home after lying to the realtors that they were interested in buying. And then they made some sort of a TikTok. And apparently the realtor, when they showed up for the appointment, said that Cody and Robin were already under contract for a bigger home in Flagstaff closer to the city. Stop it. Yep. And then there was somebody else, honey, and I sent it to you on Instagram. I don't know if you've seen it. No. But somebody else said, well, I looked to see what was available in the area. And there is a house that is currently under contract for like $3.9 <gasps> million. Dollars. Stop this beautiful it. palatial home, which is under contract. So the timing is right. It's in the correct area. And so I'm, sh- I'm not I'm 90% sure that that's not the house, but 10% of me thinks it could be that they are actually upgrading their domicile no. to a real life mansion. Literally how? why and how? how? Where is all this money coming how? from? Did they sell Coyote Pass? No. We would have all known that. We would have known. 
That is fucking weird, man. If they actually are getting a three million dollar home that's wild four million dollars how do they have that money but the realtor apparently said that they're already under contract for a bigger home like that, wherever why? it is it's is a bigger home if it's true like why? realtors tend to say things like that yeah i'm um, give like bullshit reasons that the person is leaving the home <sighs> but i i mean if it's true i would be so upset about it i'm that so makes invested me makes me mad for janelle honey yep it makes me mad for Janelle and for Mary. They should be the ones in a dorm apartment. They didn't get shit, no, those two women. They didn't. And you're going to upgrade? So we're going to have to see what happens. Girl, that's mm. insane. It is insane. If they actually purchase that, everybody's going to know about it immediately. Of course. <gasps> All right. Wow. The next bit of goss that we have is a U.S. Sun article. And granted, U.S. Sun, I mean, it ain't shit. Yeah. Nonetheless, we're going to read it. Yeah. Actually, I picked pieces out of it. And it concerns Cody and Robin. And the title of this article is Another Divorce? <gasps> Sister Wives star Robin Brown may leave husband Cody due to his controlling behavior in quote unquote volatile marriage. Oh my gosh. A source close to the TLC family spoke exclusively with the U.S. Sun, shedding light on what's allegedly happening behind closed doors. Robin and Cody are not doing well. They have been very unhappy. I mean, they've been unhappy since everything fell apart, but even more so now, it's getting worse, mm. the source claimed. A big reason for their relationship downfall is allegedly how angry Cody is. Quote, he's just really mad at the world right now. He's not who he used to be at all. He's completely changed. He's angry and he's volatile and he doesn't like anybody that's not worshiping him. Wow. The source also claimed that Cody is very controlling, which has led Robin to become submissive. Allegedly, Cody is controlling so much of her life right now that it has made her not happy. The source explained that Robin used to be more social. She visited friends and talked on the phone for hours, but that no longer happens. They also think Robin could definitely leave if things continue in the current direction. Quote, Robin is not committed to staying if things don't change. That's just what it has come down to. Their marriage is not going to sustain this level of control. Further, mm. she's not going to let her kids be raised in the same volatile, angry state that her other kids were raised in. Cody is turning into a mirror image of David Jessup. That's Robin's first husband. And she took her kids away from David Jessup and took his parental control away. You think she's going to stick around for this? No, the source said. So what that are we would be crazy. Z. So this is a source. Like a lot of these online publications like just pull their content straight from Reddit. Yeah. Like you'll have people True. giving their opinions about what could be happening and they'll make a whole ass article out of it. But this again claims to have a source. Mm -hmm. I'm wondering who that source might be. I'm wondering about the veracity of it because if it is true... Oh my god. Can you, imagine? you imagine? Bitch, that would rock uh, the world. To uh, have Cody have four divorces. Oh, oh my god. Oh my god. My I'm lips not, to God's ears, look, honey. I'm not wishing anything because that's bad karma. Yeah, true, true, but, true, true, true. But But dear God on Colob. <laughs> If you could hear our prayers. <laughs> For real. Please, Mormon God. I mean, justice. Cody, what are you doing? I mean, I don't know how you could be happily married to Cody Brown. Or Robin Brown. I mean. <laughs> but I mean, definitely. Uh, definitely Cody Brown. I yeah. mean, and once the money goes in my opinion, that's when Robin starts thinking about going. Now, of I don't course. know what kind of prospects she has now because she's, I don't know, 45 years old and she don't have a job. In yeah. my sister wife's closet, that is not a job. No. So she would have to attach herself like a parasite or a barnacle to the ass of another man mm -hmm. and start sucking out his life force and his money. <laughs> but like that's harder to do when True. you're close to 50 yeah. and you have a lot of debt under you under yeah, your belt true so what is she gonna do is she gonna get a job she's gonna sign up with the temp agency she's gonna go work at Kohl's <laughs> for all those discounts <laughs> oh on those God. blouses well i mean if she leaves him she could be interviewed just like christine and janelle mm -hmm. and all of them so she could make money like the wives are making as being the fourth ex-wife and just outing cody 
So if she wanted to go down that route, I feel like she could make money. It would be Cody who would be broke yep. AF. Yeah. His biggest fear is poverty. Mm-hmm. You're right. I'm just what I'm saying. You're actually right. Like if she left and started selling plexus or got involved with Dude. these various and sundry Mormon MLMs. Yes. She would, first of all, find the favor of the audience who would fully support her for leaving. Oh, for sure. Even though she herself is a troll. Totally. And a demon. Yeah. But we would fully support her leaving Cody Brown. Yep. She could make a bag, probably more than she could make with Cody Brown. Mm -hmm. And she could find herself another man who doesn't have to curl his hair with a curling iron. Totally. Maybe she could find another David. Wooly. Maybe. Bald. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe. I mean. Full on bald. I feel like she would have a better chance at yes. success than Cody Brown. Cody will be like the a typical divorced dad in his one bedroom apartment. Oh, yeah. Eating pizza off the floor because he has no money and no furniture and he's broke. Right. And then he'll try and figure out how to sell guns somewhere. He'll move to like New Mexico. Yeah. Maybe sell some topaz or whatever. And like that'll be his <laughs> life. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> Can't you see that? Yes. I can see that. Yeah. Yeah. So. I don't know, but that wow. would be so good. If, yeah. I don't feel like Robin's going to leave him, though. That's the thing. I don't know where she goes. I don't know what she does if she leaves him. Other than what we've just plotted out for her, she should listen to a couple of she raccoons on the internet. I think she's very deeply affected by the hate of yeah, the public. Like, totally. I feel like she would probably be scared to venture out on her own and start a new business. And I don't think she feels confident that we would rally behind her. But we would if I would. she was like, yeah. if she's like, you know, I didn't expect this to happen. Like, I didn't want this to happen. I was just being a good wife to Cody. And like, I'm working on things with the, the other wives. Like, if she came out like that, mm-hmm. she could have a redemption arc. She could. She could spin it. She could she really, really could. totally spin it. And I, I mean, there's so like two roads it. before you, Robin. Yes. There's the, ro- the road you're on now with bum ass Cody Brown <laughs> with no money in sight, honey. And then there's Balding. this other road where you could create something for yourself, find yourself a new man who's got a real job yep. that you might actually be sexually attracted to. It's yep. a whole new world. Maybe she could be on MILF Manor. Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> she kind of looks like Barbie. Uh, yeah, I probably. Mean, sort of. I mean, anyway, that's all we have in terms of hot goss. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> now let's get into the final episode from season five yeah. entitled Hard to Say Goodbye. Logan, you're going to college. Oh, right down the street. Right down the road. 15 minutes away. <laughs> in a fucking dorm. We can see you at any we time. We can visit you. But Logan's leaving. Oh my God, we're so sad. Who's going to parent our kids for us? That's exactly what they're thinking. But we start the episode episode with a very interesting discussion with mona the best part oh my god this is so the best part good all the wives are picking out their options for their houses Mm -hmm. because they're getting built so they got to pick the carpets and the tile and the stone and all this other bullshit and we start with christine kind of complaining about like having to get everything ready because she's in debt or something well she's bitching because they're still only pre-qualified they haven't gotten the full qualification the loan has not been funded honey Mm -hmm. so she's worried because she can't be late on any of her bills and it's very difficult for her i guess because she doesn't know how to use a checkbook and pay her own bills and she's up at 3 a.m and she's busy and it's just a lot to take care of being an adult yeah so she's worried about it and they're on the couch as she's speaking about this and cody's like well that's everybody christine we're all trying to stay above board until the loan goes through so dismissive very dismissive and robin calls him out for it which i thought was kind of interesting she's like don't fucking say that like we're all struggling she's allowed to be struggling and christine's like you're the worst you suck at validation you suck at validating i'm like yeah damn and then she apologizes and says i'm sorry i get really mean when i'm stressed out and i can relate as a fellow aries mean person i am i'm a mean person (laughs) (laughs) when i'm stressed i'm such a bitch yeah i know i know (laughs) fuck you (laughs) elder abuse god yeah (laughs) don't test me i know i won't honey i care a lot (laughs) Yikes. I'm kidding. I'm oh, kidding. I'm, of course you're kidding. So they make it down to uh, Pinnacle Homes. Yeah. And Robin is the first to pick her options. And it's super easy, breezy, Smooth. beautiful cover girl. She's never had a thing, honey. Nothing. She's like, I'll take whatever carpet. I'll whatever. take whatever tile. I'm fine. Yeah. Which Cody really appreciates yep. because Robin never gives them any trouble. She's a perfect submissive wife. That's right. Mm-hmm. But then we have Mary trundling oh, in. Oh, my God. And she's already 
two hundred dollars over budget. She hasn't selected her final options at all. Nothing. This is all the wet bar. This yeah. is that fifth bedroom. This is the hobby room. This the is her French fucking doors. This Girl. is all of that stuff that she insisted upon having has already put her two hundred dollars over budget. So she has no choices. She gets nothing. No. And Cody tries to tell her that as soon as she sits down. Yep. Like, let me just set your expectations. You have nothing. Yeah. You're over so, budget. Yeah. We're just taking like the basics and then you're out of here. Yep. And Mary's like, um, I'm feeling some weird energy from you, Cody. Like, you're coming at me pretty aggressive. And she gets immediately emotional. She's like, well, I'm clueless. Like, I didn't know I was over budget. Yes, you did. Yes, you fucking did. Yes, you did. How are you so stupid that you haven't been paying attention this entire fucking time? Like, and you are over budget. We've had emails from Mona talking about you being over budget. We have been in office rooms with Mona God. before with the French doors and the wet bar and Everybody knows you're over budget. So how is this a surprise to you? Like, miss me with this shit. She's acting so clueless. And she's like, well, I still want to go through everything. You get to go through all the options with all the other wives. So it's only fair. And I still want to see the options that there's no way that I can, like the extra luxe carpet, the yes. extra beautiful stone that's going to cost even more. I still want to see that. I just want to see yeah. what it's like. I oh. want to be able to make an informed decision. Right. Well, you have no money, Mary, and that's the reality of it. But she can't accept that. Mm -mm. And so she does this weird thing where she conflates it into some sort of a relationship issue. Like yeah. it's Cody who's... Um, being judgmental of her. It's Cody who is looking down on her when Yikes. she doesn't really know what's happening. And I'm like, actually, I'm kind of on Cody's side. Yeah. I'm just trying to tell you, like, we ain't got no money, honey. You're over fucking budget. These houses are like 400 grand each, right? right. Like, this is crazy. And you're complaining about how you have to have French doors and you have to have everything perfect. And like on the couch, Mary's like, her logic with this because, you know, she's a very logical person. She she's thinks, a Capricorn. Yeah, she's very practical is what she says. But she says the reason why she wants everything to be perfect now is so she doesn't have to spend extra money later down the road to make it perfect. That makes no fucking sense. No, and you don't have the money for it. No, so wait until you have the money for it. And then you can do the upgrades. Well... She starts shorting out and her walls go <laughs> yeah. up. My walls are up. Yeah. And she's like, I'm just going to step out. And Mona, would it be OK if you meet with the other wives and I'll come in at the end and we can talk about it then? And she's near tears and or crying. After she's already fighting with Cody in right. front of these people. You have no options. Like, this is it. Like, pick your dumb carpet, your basic carpet. Pick your basic tile and get up on out of here. And leave. Right. But she doesn't want to. She wants the good stuff. Yes. And she wants to actually take it from another wife in order to get it, which we will get to. Uh-huh. Well, because the next wife we have is Janelle. Right. And Janelle is also easy breezy. She's like, whatever. She's like, oh, I'm over budget with the concrete slab. Fine. We won't do it. I'll just DIY it. It's cool. And Cody's like, um, our kids are going to be bringing dirt into the house directly into the carpet if you don't put a concrete patch she's like i'll figure it out i'll yeah. do it later it'll be it'll be fine yeah she has no problem going without unlike mary yep then we bring in christine now christine is under budget uh -huh. she's got some room yep she has some options yep and cody says well maybe you can kick some of that overage toward mary because she's over budget Mm. and he kind of laughs about it yeah. as if it's a joke and Christine's like well let me see what we have first and she's like I'm very interested in getting some st um, stone on the outside of the house and then Cody brings it up again uh -huh. because Christine's going to make the choice for the stone on the exterior of the home. Yep. And Cody's like, well, I mean, maybe we can think about it because Mary is over budget and we can use that money for Mary. Mm -mm. And this makes Christine feel bad. And she's like, well, let's look at the prices and then I'll make a decision. But I'm probably going to be selfish and choose the stone that I want mm -hmm. and not give it to Mary. And then on the couch, they have a discussion about it. And Christine apologizes to Mary. Like, I'm sorry. Like, I know that's selfish. And Mary's like, don't be sorry. I'm the one who's over budget over here. Yeah. And Cody's like, well, I was just joking. Mm -hmm. I didn't mean it. No, you But weren't. you did mean it. Yeah. And then we have Janelle saying, I don't care. As long as you're not taking out of my fund to I'm fund fine. your bullshit, I'm fine. As long as I get what I need, I'm fine. Which my inference from that is... That there's been a precedent here. Oh, yeah. Like in the past, Mary has 100% dipped into the funds of the other wives to, I don't know, pay for her food, pay her for her furniture. clothes, pay for her furniture, pay for yep. her rent. 
And it's been unfair. Oh, totally. And it's probably been Janelle having to take the sacrifice because it seems like Janelle's kind of a sacrificing person. Like she'll give up what she wants just to save for like the gre- the greater good. Whereas Christine's a little bit more hard-headed. Probably, Christine probably in the past was like, I'm homeschooling a million fucking kids. Like you're not taking my money for groceries. Like you're not taking my money to help with kids' school supplies. Like fuck you. So it probably had to be Janelle. And now the tables have turned. So now Cody's trying to get Christine to give mm-hmm. up some of her money because she conveniently is under budget. Bitch. No. Miss me with that. Mm-hmm. And then we have Mary making her decisions and she ends up being like four grand over budget. 46 65 over budget. She has to bring Robin in so that uh, Cody will feel compelled <laughs> to, yep. to not get up in her ass about that. But Mary says something like, well, but don't worry about it. I'll pay for that out of my own funds. And I'm like, what funds? Yeah. Like, what? you don't have a job. You don't have a job. Your fund is TLC. All of your payments go into one account. It's the family LLC. So mm-hmm. what funds are you talking about Christine's that are going to pay for this? It doesn't make any sense. You don't have a job. I feel like there's some money laundering going around uh, in yeah. this family. Yeah. Like, I feel like Cody probably moved money mm-hmm. around a lot. Like, not just between him and Robin, but I feel like he was moving it around yes. between all the wives. Like, if he's the beneficiary of all of these fiduciary. accounts or whatever. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, he's, in, he's the fiduciary <laughs> of it. No, it's fine. Um, Then he's probably moving it all around. Sure. He's probably making agreements with some of the wives and mm-hmm. not saying anything. Like... If he thinks like, oh, it's fine, a couple hundred dollars here and there, whatever, it's fine. Like, that's probably what he did And the reason now. Janelle is butthurt is because she's the one who's actually doing the, the record and keeping and the it. accounting. And she sees how he moves it around. Because if you recall, I don't know, two seasons ago, she's like, well, I see where that money goes. Yeah. And that money doesn't need to be going to all of these things. It could be allocated in different ways. So she sees what he's doing when he's moving his little shell game, his mm-hmm. little shells around. But he's the patriarch. Yep. So the buck stops with him. He can do what he wants. Yikes. So I'm just wondering where this money's going to come from then, Mary. Christine. I don't think so. I think Christine used every last dollar that she I could to so. get all of the things that she wanted. I think she's unwilling to share with Mary because I think in the past she's been forced to do so. Yeah. And so has Janelle. And Mary is putting on this big show on the couch like, oh, my God, don't feel selfish. Absolutely not. I'll pay for it myself. I'm the one who's over budget. But when you break down the logistics... It's going to have to come out of the family fund at the end of the day. Totally. And this is probably why Mary is resentful over Janelle and Christine as well, because she feels like she's judged or criticized. And Mary probably takes it personally because she has one kid. Like she probably uses that as an excuse all the time to justify why she needs to be $4,600 over budget in her house. And then on the couch, again, it's the same bullshit. Like, well, I had to have the wet bar because I like to entertain. And in order to have the wet bar, I have to have the pantry and the fifth bedroom and the hobby room. So I have to have all these things and my French doors. Mm -hmm. (laughs) It's like, girl. And then we learn at the end of this episode information that I didn't know, which is that Leon is actually leaving at the end of this school year. So Leon is only going to be in this finished house for like six months. Yeah. And then Mary is in an empty nest yeah. with five fucking bedrooms, a hobby room, a pantry, a wet bar, Why? and French doors, and over budget, and having the... Fa- it's just so unreasonable. It's so unreasonable. And even it though is. she may not be dipping into the funds of the other wives, I would still be pissed if I'm Christine. I would still be pissed if I'm Janelle. Oh, for sure. Because like, you don't need all of this. No. And as we said so many times before, people probably hate me because I'm such a broken record. Install your wet bar after the fact. Just like Janelle's going to install her concrete pad, bitch. Hello. All you have to do is hire a contractor. It's not a big fucking deal. She doesn't want to have to deal with that. She wants it to be perfect. And I can't remember if I mentioned this a couple of episodes ago or not i saw this on reddit somebody had made a comment about why mary's so particular about having her house and everything be so fucking perfect it's like a coping mechanism she's doing it because her life isn't perfect her marriage isn't perfect she couldn't have her perfect eight kid family like she is struggling mentally probably and so that's why she's like focusing so much on this stupid fucking wet bar and this big ass house but it's like girl Go to therapy. Mm -hmm. Quit coping. This house that you're going to be in by yourself because your husband's not going to fuck you anymore Mm -mm. after this, Mm -mm. especially after- Hasn't been. Hasn't been fucking her. No. And I think like the whole IVF, like trying to figure out if she's going to make a decision. I think that's him being like, 
we're not going to fuck anymore. If you don't want to have a kid, we're not going to fuck anymore. Really? We're not going to have an intimate relationship. I bet that's what it is. I don't think they are having an intimate relationship based on the things that Mary is saying in 2023, 2024. I think they're already not doing it, but it may be his formal declaration. Like, yeah, I'm cutting this dick off. That's what I'm thinking. And getting this pencil wet. This yep. pencil is mine and only for Robin. Yep. And that's probably why she goes back and forth because it's like, well, do I want to try and have a kid and have it fail? Like, no, she doesn't want to have to go through that heartbreak. But I don't know. I just think Mary's uh, like a crazy fucking person. And there's a whole house debacle. I'm like, girl, you're insane. That's an interesting idea that she would be using her physical space in order to have some control in her life because her out of controlness shows up in different ways in her life. So it's just maybe something she feels like she can do to get her way to yep. have something nice for herself because what she wanted, what she needed from her husband, from her family has been taken away from her, like through every fault of her own, by the way. Oh, like yeah, I mean, totally. she absolutely contributed to the reason people feel the way that they do about her. But at the same time, Cody and Robin and everything that's going on. I mean, I feel for her. Yeah. This isn't a great coping mechanism. No. And I'm just not sure how you're funding this. Uh, it really doesn't make any sense to me. It makes no sense. And I wish we could get into the coins, but we won't. Bummer. And then we have Mary making a family video for Logan. And I'm a snorry. And I mean, like, I guess it's cute or whatever. It's kind of cringy because, like, you know, an 18-year-old boy who just wants to go to college and get right. out of his family house, he doesn't give a fuck. I don't want your quilt, bitch. I don't. The <laughs> quilt, too. I'm like, okay, so you're spending all this money on these houses. Yeah. And you can't get me, like, a mini fridge Yeah. for my dorm room. A Starbucks card. I mean, Something. some Subway. Yeah. Like, what, you're going to make me a quilt? That I am going to be too embarrassed to display. <laughs> Like I would never room. like how am I going to get down with some shoddy exactly if I have got this shoddy. fucking family quilt on Seriously. my bed it's not going to work my dad's weird photo staring at me with his um be a godly man oh my god Jesus oh, we're jumping ahead a little bit but yeah Mary has got her Sony Handycam out and she's fucking it up and doesn't I don't know care. how to record I don't care yeah and then we move on to the balding part oh, let's girl. get to that Cody gets a haircut and this was great. It was a long segment. This was about so his balding. Good. The producers did him dirty. Loved it. I loved it because this hairstylist, who's paid for by TLC, is doing his hair, and she's like, "You know what, Cody? Your hair is thinning really bad. Just in the last year since I've been cutting it, you have lost <laughs> a ton of hair, dude. Like, look at all this skin right here. Look at all the skin from where you're balding." And Cody's acting like he knows and he's okay with it. And I get it. But no, you know, not. deep down. Oh, oh, my God. It hurts so bad. He's got period pain. Oh, no. oh he's got cramps, honey. <laughs> he's then, in pain. And then he wants us to believe that the reason why he has his hair long is because the wives all love it. Because they love this like shaggy surfer look that I have going on here. They love it. Okay, I don't know Surfer? that that's the look that you're actually achieving, says the woman from Hawaii. You've never surfed a day in your life, <laughs> okay. man. I mean, I think he, I think he should have shaved it. And for a second there, I wondered if he was going to do that. I hoped. Oh, but God. He, he was not going to. Because... I don't think Janelle wants it to be short. I don't think Christine likes it short. I don't think any of them actually want him to shave it. I don't know how any of anybody could be attracted to him <laughs> long or short in hair. any form at all. But like, I mean, imagine if he shaved it, he had a buzz cut, but like a really close buzz cut. Sure. And he grew like a, a fucking sons of anarchy beard. Cause yeah, he wants I to be a manly that. man. What if you got a tattoo? Yeah. I mean, if you got a piercing or something like that, it would, I, it would be, it would be better than what we got going on right now. <laughs> it would be a lot with your better. tufts of hair. I mean, wind blowing. Oh my God. He even calls it what it is. A comb over. He's like, yeah. it's literally a comb over. Yeah, we know. We've been seeing it. But like we haven't even gotten to like the best hair years of him yet. Have you seen the ones where his hair is super fucking long? Yes. And straightened yes. to filth? Yes. <laughs> it's so, so terrible. I can't wait for those. So bad. It's really bad. But I mean, it's not worse than what we currently have with the Shirley Temple, Curly Q, Surfer. Curly Girl method. Oh, yeah. No, no the, 2024. 2024, This yeah. is the worst, right? This one's really bad. Well, it's yeah. because he has no hair. Like his hair is even more like thin Mm -hmm. even more thin even thinner yeah now than it is in 2013 well and he seems to understand he ain't got no hair in 2012 2013 but he says he's so attached to it 
we know. <laughs> yeah, we've seen it. <laughs> we can tell. The various iterations over the years, honey. And then he gets all fucking triggered because Maddie at the family <laughs> breakfast the next day is like, dad, you're balding. And he's like, shut up, Like Maddie. he just had his hair did. <laughs> He got his hair did. It was all styled. He goes down to the breakfast table so they can have a family moment before Logan gets shipped off to college. And the first thing Maddie says is, oh, my God, you're bald, Daddy. And he's like, don't say that. That's rude. That is so funny. I loved it. And then on the couch, Maddie's like, yeah, he's pretending he's not bald, but he is. You know, and I actually have like a funny uncensored for this. All All right. Let's get back from uncensored. Um, and by the way, if you want to hear all of our uncensored bits, honey, you got to go to the Patreon and yeah. you got to subscribe. By the way, oh, and never mind. I was going to give you a discount, but I forgot about it. I didn't set it up yet. I can't be bothered. It's too much. <laughs> it is too much. But we're back oh. talking about Cody Brown. Cody Balding. Cody Balding Brown. <laughs> Maddie calling him out. He's butt hurt. He's, so He's getting triggered. sensitive. Yeah. And totally we is. see in the arc of the seasons from this point on how he starts to overcompensate. Yeah. For his drastic balding. Yeah. His catastrophic balding <laughs> journey. He starts to overcompensate and hide it even more. Oh, yeah. For sure. Yeah. And then acts like he isn't anymore like even now with some of the photos that have come out in 2024 Jesus. of the whole cul-de-sac oh going God. on right up here with the two pieces of hair just kind of hanging on for dear life right here why doesn't he just get one of those hair transplants for men i mean i think it's like what twenty thousand dollars i'm sure he's got the money for it sometimes those fail like oh. it it requires like healthy follicles and shit okay. <laughs> and, like sometimes it fails i've known guys who've gotten that done <laughs> like in their 20s because they were balding hardcore right and they were super self-conscious and it i failed. hear it's really painful as yes. well yes and you're swollen and shit and you look like really weird because you got all these for a pop period marks. of time yeah but you would think for him like he's so vain he's so attached to his celebrity I mean, and he's got a little pocket change he's got yeah. that lexus money honey you'd think he would get some transplant action and well, try and work that out and people are thinking he's got fillers and shit i mean oh, yeah. so yeah i wouldn't put it past him but maybe he's just too old for that Maybe they're like, you know what? You're ancient. You're right. not going to be able to have hair anymore. Well, but he's curling his hair as hard as he can. He's curling his hair like it is his job. <laughs> like that's all he does 24-7 is find new ways to curl his fucking hair. So yeah. he's very sensitive about it. He, he should just get a sensitive. transplant. Yeah, he should. Anyway, back to um, the show. Yeah. <laughs> so then we have Mary making that dumb video for Logan. Where did he do that? Yeah, we, well, we talked about it. And then they show the video. And they give him his quilt. Right. And he's like, oh, wow, thanks for this lovely gift. Again, should have gotten him a mini fridge. That would have been great. Or like a laptop. Yeah. Like, come a on. laptop. I mean. Or, or money. Give me a thousand dollars in my bank. I can start a bank account. It would be so fantastic. Right. Yeah. But no. Like something way better. Like a quilt. He does sit down on the floor, though, and he does watch the entire video yeah. with all of the kids telling stories about their memories of Logan. And you can really see in the flashbacks just how parentified and therefore abused he was by those adults in that house. <sighs> yep. And how all of the kids are going to miss him. And they're crying. They're unhappy. And he says something like, what I'm going to miss about my family is also what I need to get away from, yes. which is their chaos. Yes. And the chaos, it's so crazy and it's so disorganized and somebody's always screaming and there's always something happening. But at the same time, the chaos is the life of the family. Yeah. So I'm going to miss it, but I also really want to get away from it. And that's totally fucking fair. I mean, this is a rite of passage. Like everybody needs to leave the nest eventually, especially when you're a parentified child. Like mm -hmm. you want to get the fuck out and just have your own independence. So I'm sure he was like, saying it with all of the love he had but at the same time he's like get me the fuck out of here don't you have the feeling that he knows he was parentified not the totally. therapeutic term but don't you think he knows that they asked a lot of him and he's ready to go i feel like every oldest child knows that mm -hmm. like i was the oldest child i was totally the mom like that's like a thing that you deal with a lot of the time especially in like a dysfunctional crazy family like i didn't have a big family but i was doing everything so like you know you know in your teen years that you're fucking doing everything. And even Janelle brings it up on the couch. She's like, he's been such an instrumental part in like getting all of the kids ready for school and like taking care of everything while I work and Christine takes care of the littles or whatever. Like, so she admits it. But I'm mm -hmm. like, are you telling that to your son? Like, I'm sure it would mean a lot. 
to hear from his mom. Like, I bet Janelle has said that. I Janelle hope. seems like she loves him so much. And I she hope. even says in her video uh, component, her part of the video, she's like, I want you to go there. I want you to study hard, but I want you to play hard. Yeah. Like she really wants him to have a great experience and become his own individual, even though she's worried because she's scared he's not going to be a Mormon, even <laughs> though she's worried because she's scared he's going to hook up with women and do all of the things that he's kids do. He's already been doing that. Probably. But she lets him go. Yeah. So I think she loves him so much. And I do think Janelle is probably telling him that. I hope so. Mm -hmm. But then Cody and his segment is like, yeah, you're a decent individual. <laughs> can't you just be like, you're an amazing son? No, you can't. No. But that's about it. Well, but then they want to hold on to Logan for a few hours oh, more. Right. And so cul -de -sac. they're like, let's go back to the cul-de-sac because they're putting the walls up. And then we have these this weird... Uh, part where we're starting to talk about the IVF again. Yeah. I think it's because they're talking about getting into the homes by Christmas and whether they can do that. And then we kind of go back to Cody asking Mary to make a decision about IVF by the time that they're in their homes. And so we're having this discussion again about whether she wants to do it or not. And I'm just like, I'm so over it. I'm so tired. So of it. tired of it. Like, what do you expect from Mary? She doesn't want to have a kid. And another flashback of Robin on her birthing bed. Oh, w surrogate. I mean this with my whole heart. <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, we get it, Robin. You're a saint. Of course. Mm -hmm. Cap in hand. Yes. She came into this family. Yeah. I thought that was weird that Cody brought that up again. And then we're at the cul-de-sac and then we're talking about family mission statements because we want to be just like the Dargers. Right. Because they're so much better than us is basically the subtext there. Yeah. I think that they met with the Dargers and Cody started thinking of all the content that they could create for the show mm -hmm. by having a mission statement and a time capsule and all of these things that they could do. Yeah. None of which seems very genuine. No, not at all. And I think they end up doing a mission statement later. They do. And they yeah. do a time capsule. And then they have a recommitment ceremony or a commitment uh -huh. ceremony. They do all of these things. They have all of these events yeah. in order to create content. But are they happy Oops. underneath that? I don't think so. Because no. I think as soon as they get into the cul-de-sac, Cody starts staying predominantly with Robin. Oh, yeah. And there was actually a clip going on, going around on Reddit recently from one of these seasons, I think it was like six, seven, eight, something like that, where Janelle in the Vegas homes is calling Cody out for favoring Robin. And she's like, I just hope you don't leave us all behind. And he's like reassuring her and holding her hand. And he's like, that's, no, I would never. That's when Mary's going to get a divorce from him and he's going to make Robin the legal wife. And Janelle is the one. Calling it out. He's got the longest history with Mary, but it's Janelle who's like, I'm worried about that. Yep. I don't know if I can trust that. And lo and behold... You can't. Nope. Yep. So she called it out. Yes. All these seasons ago. But same with Christine. She's been calling it too. Well, I did peep season six and it looks like we're still in construction. We're waiting yep. for loans to come through. Season six has like 17 I episodes. Know. It's a really long season. It's really long. So there's a lot going on. Yeah. And I think my sister wife's closet's in there somewhere. Mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure that's when the Shark Tank episode is. Yeah. Which would be so good. I think we're also debating anti-polygamists yeah. in season six. So there's a lot more common. Yep. We're definitely going to stay with it. However, when we have a live or a, a current season of Sister Wives, we don't do the rewinds. Nope. So we will wait to get into season six until after 19 is complete Beatrice. Yes. Is that it? <laughs> That's all. <laughs> Well, do you have the anything end. else that you want to say about this season or any other thoughts before we get up on out of here? No, I'm I'm excited for season 19. I'm mm -hmm. like, give it to me. Yeah. Give it to me good. I'm worried about it a little bit. It's going to be the same bullshit. I'm concerned about it a little bit. Like, I'm already feeling some kind of way. Like, I shouldn't feel this way because I know they're not going to live up to it, but I want them to honor Garrison so much. I want them to kind of change the narrative around the kids and how they've been treated. And like, I don't know, I just want them to take a different tone with this season. And based on the thing that they released two days ago on TLC and based on what I'm seeing in the trailers, I'm like, I don't think they're going to do that. No. And I think I'm just going to hate Cody so much more. And oh, I think yeah. I'm going to be seeing through Robin so much more. And I'm, I'm nervous about that. Yeah. But at the same time, I'm excited to get into it. I mean, I'm going to watch it. Of course. Period. That's what we do. That's our job. Like, even though I'm going to be enraged the entire time and spewing hate on this podcast, I'm still going to watch it yeah. and enjoy it. 
Are they going to get to Garrison in season 19? That's what I'm like wondering. I wonder if they're going to have like previous footage and then maybe with Garrison's passing, maybe we'll go to semi-current time. Mm -hmm. Maybe they'll kind of fast forward it. What we're seeing in the trailer or whatever that was two days ago from TLC where we have all of the adults Mm -hmm. sitting down and describing what their interpretation of joy is, et cetera, et cetera. That is recent footage. Yeah. That is Cody recent. And when you see how he looks and when you hear his answers, even after the passing of Garrison, this is months after Garrison has passed, he has not fucking changed. Not at all. He has not changed. Unfortunately. Yeah. How do you lose your child under situations, under a situation where you have culpability and responsibility? Totally, yeah. Because you didn't take care of that child. And plus he was talking to, texting to TLC on the night of his passing. How does that happen? And you're still showing up to this preseason looking like an angry, red-pilled incel that's married. I don't know. Maybe because he's drinking and he's a piece of shit. Like he's not getting actual therapy. He's not doing any kind of work on himself. He's not doing any amount of self-reflection. I mean, can we fucking expect him too mm-hmm. i mean i mean we I thought, would hope yeah we thought we he would a little bit after such a tragic event you would hope that you would grow up and get out your head get your head out of your ass but no it's cody fucking brown yeah you would think it would disrupt the pattern to some degree or it would bring the family together or there would be like authentic conversations about what people need and how we can heal but it feels like nothing has changed he's just gotten angrier we're just gonna have another season Mm -hmm. filled with a lot of the old footage of cody talking about how his wives ain't shit and they suck and they're betraying him and there's no self-reflection there's no awareness it's just going to be enraging for so many of us yep but that's how we came into this journey. It's how we're going to go out. We're going to be course. screaming about Cody motherfucking Brown. Always. Yep. <laughs> well, is there anything else you want to say before we get out of here? Nope. If you love us, please be sure to go to your favorite podcast platform and leave us a glowing five-star review. Ah! It really helps us grow the pod and we really appreciate it. Thank you very much. We will be back to talk Welcome to Plathville. Uh-huh. We don't have Unexpected. Thank God. And the next we hear of Sister Wives, it's going to be season 19, episode one. Yes, bitch. Stay tuned for that. Until then, please don't forget that we have nothing but love for you. And peace out. Bye. Bye, guys.